Okay, so up until now, we haven't had very many cases that accept an NVMe drive, but this one from 52Pi, this metal case, does take either this N05 or N04 adapter. Both of them put an NVMe drive on top of the Pi, and let's see how they work. So this is the N05, and uh, it's got an adapter here for a 2242. There's a hole here, but it's been welded on to the 2242 space, so it's obviously designed for that size. This is the PCIe slot, and uh, we've got GPIO power coming through this bit here. So nice and simple. So we're literally just placing it on top of the board like that. And obviously we have these shafts that go down all the way around. Oh, and we also have another NVMe adapter here. Not quite sure how that works. Let's have a look at the instructions. So it doesn't mention this. And there's definitely a screw to go down through the top of it. Yeah, I don't know why I've got that bit. But yeah, nice simple design. I ended up with two cables as well. I'm not sure if you always get two cables. Uh, obviously you only need one to connect that board. But if this one fits, I think I'm more interested in it. This is the longer one. So it takes the full 80 millimeter NVMe drives. Oh, this comes with two as well. That's nice. And again, you have the different positions, but the adapter is soldered onto that part. Oh, and the PCIe goes through. Well, that's a different design. So it keeps it all internal. Ah, that's probably because it's designed more for a case. I've got another one of these. And basic instructions. So I'm gonna to have to put that cable in first, feed it through and put it in. That might be a little bit difficult. Let's try popping it in this way first. And then I don't want to bend it too much. Will that just feed down through without having to fold it? Yeah, I think that's going to be okay. Yeah, that's fine. I didn't put much of a kink in that. And again, the same design where it sits on the power here, so it takes power from the GPIO pins. Not all of them do, but this one obviously does. Clamp that down. And pop that back on. But yeah, it doesn't stick out further than the pie. So let's have a look at the case before I start to assemble it. So just four screws on the back it looks like. They've left this nice and big for a lot of cooling. Oh, and it actually comes with an official Raspberry Pi 5 active cooler to go inside. Wasn't expecting that. So I'm gonna to have to take this off again to get that back on. Being careful not to pull the PCIe. And it just punches through the holes that are specially designed for it. So there's no screws to get that into place. There we go, that's in place. I can go back on. And I might test that to see that that's working before I assemble it. Okay, so that's all up and running, and uh, I only installed this operating system the other day to an NVMe drive for the first time, and uh, I hadn't made any changes to it, and it's worked. It's pretty cool because there are some instructions on here to enable PCIe. Now, I think because the EEPROM has been updated, you don't need to do this anymore. So uh, there's an edit for the EEPROM, so PCIe probe equals one and boot order. So I haven't done any of those changes. And also these, uh, well, I'm probably going to apply this one to get Gen 3 speeds, but let's do a speed test first of all. So if we open up a terminal and go to the config.txt, you can see in here, this is just my standard one on my version of KDE Plasma, and there's nothing about PCIe entered at all. So let's run a speed test and see what happens. So diagnostics. And I always run three tests and take the one with the fastest random read speed. So that was nice and fast. So let's copy that into a document and let's tell it this is without modification. So I did three tests and this was the best random read speed from all of the tests. Uh, in fact, it came up with the same speed twice. Uh, so let's have a look and see how that compares to PCIe 2 speeds because I've done some tests before. So if I go to my channel, 
and let's do a search for in my channel for NVMe. This is always a good tip if you're looking for a particular video of mine. If you go to my channel and use this search box, uh, it will just hone it down a bit. Uh, so if we go to this one, so I tested three Geekworm NVMe PCIe boards, and in the results I've got some speed tests. And here we are. So this is PCIe 2. So this is a direct comparison, really, with a different drive. So I was using the Keoxia drive. Uh, sequential write speed much faster, uh, which I think is right for the Patriot drive. Uh, random write speed 98,000 compared to 78,000, so that's faster. Random read speed 53,000 compared to 53,718 on that. Uh, so PCIe 3 is uh, is faster again. So what we need to do is check what the Patriot is capable of. So if we go into this video because I tested it in this one. So in in the uh, description there should be some results. Yeah, here we go. So this is the same drive, sequential write speed 728,000 compared to 402, uh, random write speed 141,000 compared to 98,000. And random read speed never improves massively, but 56,888. So we need to see if we can enable PCIe 3, uh, which if I close this down, let's open a terminal and go into the config and let's add some lines in. So if you put a hash in, it ignores the line 52pi NVMe just to remind me what I've done. And then DT param equals PCIE X one underscore gen equals three. So hopefully I can just add that line because obviously all the other bits it said to add, I haven't needed to do and it's worked fine. Uh, and as I say, I think this is because the EEPROM keeps getting updated, PCIe is really popular on the Pi, and uh, yeah, I think you just don't need to do all the steps that you used to. So if we do Control X, hit Y for yes, and enter, and let's do a reboot and see if we can improve on those tests. Okay, so back into diagnostics, and let's run that test three times. Yeah, already much faster speeds. Uh, so let's get my document up and open this one. So let's copy that first one in and reset and run again. Okay, so let's see how much we've got an improvement. So with PCIe 2 speed, so with no modification at all, 402,000 uh, compared to with PCIe 3, we had 720,000 and 780,000 twice. Uh, random write speed, we had 98,000, which went up to 112,000, and then 141,000. Random read speed, 53,000, went up to 56 uh, consistently. So, yeah, definitely worth doing. The fastest result, the one I'm going to keep with the best random read speed, so it's this one, 566, which also had the same random write speed as this test, uh, and also the same sequential write speed, so yeah, really good. So Patriot and it's 52 pi N04. Yeah, so let's save that and I'll use that. That will be in the description of the video. Let's go back to those Patriot NVMe speeds with the Geekworm NVMe adapter. So this video. So we're looking at these tests. So 728,000, 780,000 was faster with the same random write speed which is really cool. Uh, and random read speed was almost exactly the same again, not very much in it at all. So very, very similar performance to the Geekworm adapters. And 52Pi did let me know that uh, this metal case also supports the Geekworm PCIe adapters X1001 and X1000, which is really good of them to say. So if you've already bought one of those boards and you're just looking for a metal case to fit it into, then they're compatible as well. One very cool thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that the board has actually got loads of holes in it. And obviously the reason for that is to let the fan go through it. 
So the cooling actually affects directly on the NVMe drive, and NVMe drives do generate quite a lot of heat. So that's a really nice touch to it. I've put in these columns and the little feet here as well, and a little screw in the top to secure them all in place. So it's nice and solid, and you can see how it looks. And that obviously fits into here. So it must be, yeah, this way around. And then that's got to line up with the feet, which it does. So you can see these are nice and proud on here, which is always good. And I've just got to screw all those in together with these little tiny supplied screws. So that's all in place. So you can see there's space underneath it and also space above it. Uh, we've got access for the GPIO pins, the ones that aren't being used by the hat. Uh, we've also got uh, access to everything else that's there. There's a little hole for the button. So we've got the power button, which is accessible as well. SD card is, I think, nice and accessible. Let's just test that. Sometimes they aren't. Oh yeah, that's really easy to get in and out. This is a great case, and one of the reasons it's a great case is because I can leave the lid off. I've got active cooling, but I've also got protection around the Pi uh, because I regularly change the drive. So let's pop that drive in and secure it with the screw that came with it. Although I probably won't be using the screw in the future because I change it so often. Uh, and then let's pop this in place. And then we've got four more screws to go in the back here. Uh, one of the things that I really like, uh, which is a small thing, but it bugs me when cases don't come with it. It comes with these rubber feet. Uh, so it feels really nice on my desk, feels nice and safe and secure. It's not gonna scratch anything. So let's pop those on. Yeah, this is a really nice case. I'm, I'm really happy with that. Everything about it is really well thought out. I like the fact they've got this extra uh, sort of wide opening on the top here. I like the fact that it's pretty accessible for an NVMe drive and I probably will end up not using the lid, but that is that is really good. Let's plug it all in. Actually, without the ethernet, let's check if the Wi-Fi is working because it is in a metal case and I often get people saying about it. Okay, so the Wi-Fi is a bit affected. You can see here uh, that it's connected, but uh, it looks pretty weak from that symbol. I guess that's to be expected without having any external antenna and putting it inside a metal case. But uh, I generally use with ethernet, so that's not gonna bother me. Uh, my Wi-Fi router is on the same floor, but it's reasonably far away. I've just plugged in my ethernet cable, that's why that's changed. So thanks very much to 52Pi for sending me these two boards to test and also the case. Uh, I think this is gonna be my case for quite some time. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.